In this video, we will discuss how we can find the top view and a bottom view of a binary tree. So this can be done both recursively and iteratively. The recursive method I have discussed in my previous video. Here we'll focus on the iterative method. So we are given this binary tree. The top view will be those nodes which are visible when we view the tree from the top. So the nodes that will be visible are H, D, A, Z, C and B. Because node K will be hidden by node D. So K is not visible. L will be hidden by node A. So L is not visible. And P will be hidden by node Z. So P is not visible. So the top view will consist of nodes H, D, A, Z, C, B. And the bottom view will consist of those nodes which would be visible when we view this tree from the bottom. So the nodes that would be visible are H, K, L, P, C and B. Because D will be hidden by node K. So D is not visible. A will be hidden by node L and Z will be hidden by node P. So the bottom view consists of nodes H, K, L, P, C, B. So given a tree, we have to find the top view and the bottom view. Let's see the algorithm for finding out these views. So for this binary tree, the top view will consist of the nodes H, D, A, Z, C and B. K will be hidden by node D, L will be hidden by node A and P will be hidden by node Z. So let's first try to understand what is the logic behind this algorithm. So we draw these vertical lines from each of the nodes. So let's consider the root node to be the point zero and this is the x axis. So let's find the distance of each of the nodes from the root node. P and Z are at distance one. C is at distance two and B is at distance three. Similarly, K and D, which are on the left side, they have a negative distance of minus one and node H has a negative distance of minus two. So A has a distance of 0, Z is 1, B is 3. Let's write down the level number also. So this is level 0, D and Z are at level 1, H, L, C are at level 2, and K, P, B are at level 3. So in the iterative method, we do a level order traversal. So if you have any doubts on how the level order traversal works, you can refer to the link in the top right corner or in the description. So let's write these distances starting from the leftmost. So the leftmost node is minus 2 distance. So the node is H. At minus 1 we have D and K. At 0 we have A and L. At 1 we have Z and P. At 2 we have C. And at 3 we have B. So whenever we have two nodes which have the same distance from the root like D and K, AL and ZP. Then we have to pick that node which has a lower level or which is on the top. So for D and K, D has a lower level. So we'll pick D. For A and L, we'll pick A because A has a lower level. And for Z and P, we'll pick Z because Z has a lower level. So if we write this down, the top view will be H, D, A, Z, C, B. So we'll do a level order traversal of this tree and we'll store the distances from the root node in the map and at the end we will print it. So that is the basic logic of the algorithm. Now let's see the pseudocode. So the first step of the algorithm is we need to create a map that stores node value corresponding to distance from the root. So let's say this is the map and we'll create the entries here. Then the second step is we create a queue of pair tree node and the distance from the root. So let's say this is our queue. So these are the two data structures required a map and a queue. Then we push root comma zero in the queue. So root node is a. So here we push a comma zero in the queue. Then we have this while loop which we have to run till the queue is not empty. We come inside and we check the front of the queue. So front of the queue is a comma zero. So current is a and the distance is zero. Then in the next step, we pop from the queue. So we remove a comma zero from the queue and the queue is empty. Then we check if the map doesn't contain distance which is zero. 
So the map has no entry for zero. So we come inside the if statement and we create a new key zero, which points to a. Then we check if left of a is not equal to null. So left of a is d. So we push d comma minus one to the queue. Then we check right of a. So right of a is z, which is not equal to null. So we push z and one to the queue. In the next iteration, we check if the queue is empty. We come inside and now current becomes equal to front of queue, which is d, and the distance is minus one. Then we pop from the queue. So we remove the front of the queue, which was d comma minus one. Then we check if the map contains entry for minus one. So there is no entry for minus one. So we come inside and we create a new key for minus one, which maps to d. Then we check left of d, left of d is h. So we push h and minus two to the queue. Then we check right of d, which is l. So we push l and zero to the queue. In the next iteration, we again check if the queue is empty. Then we check front of queue. So front of the queue is z comma one. So current becomes z and the distance becomes one. Then we pop from the queue. So we remove z comma one. Then we check if the map contains key for one. So there is no entry for one. We come inside and we create a new entry for one, which maps to z. Then we check left of z. So left of z is null. So this if statement is false. And then we check right of z, which is c. So we push c comma two to the queue. In the next iteration, the front of the queue is h. So current becomes h and the distance becomes minus two. Then we pop from the queue. So we remove h comma minus two. Then we check if the map contains entry for minus two. So there is no key for minus two. So we come inside and we create a new key for minus two, which maps to h. Then we check left of h. So left of h is null. So this if condition is false. And then we check right of h, which is also null. So this condition is also false. In the next iteration, we check if the queue is empty. Now the front of the queue is l comma zero. So current becomes equal to l and the distance is zero. Then we pop from the queue. So we remove l comma zero. Then we check if the map contains entry for zero. So there is already one entry for zero. So this if condition is false. Then we check left of l, which is k. So we push k comma minus one to the queue. And then we check right of l, which is p. So we push p comma one to the queue. In the next iteration, front of the queue is c comma two. So current becomes equal to c and the distance is two. Then we pop from the queue. So we remove front of the queue, which is c comma two. Then we check if the map contains key for two. So there is no key for two. So we come inside and then we create a new entry for two, which maps to C. Then we check left of C. So left of C is null. So this if condition is false. And then we check right of C, which is B. So we push B comma three to the queue. In the next iteration, we check the front of the queue. So front of the queue is K comma minus one. So current is K and the distance is minus one. Then we pop from the queue. So we remove K comma minus one. We check if the map contains entry for minus one. So there is already one entry for minus one. So this if condition is false. Then we check left of K. So left of K is null. So this if condition is false and right of K is also null. So this if condition is also false. In the next iteration, front of the queue is P comma one. So current becomes one and distance is one. Then we pop from the queue. So we remove the front element. Then we check if the map contains entry for one. So there is already entry for one in the map. So this if condition is false. Then we check left of P. So left of P is null. So this if condition is false. And right of P is also null. So this if condition is also false. In the next iteration, front of the queue is B comma three. So current is B and the distance is three. Then we pop from the queue. So the queue is empty now. Then we check if the map contains key for three. So there is no entry for three. So we come inside 
and we create a new key for 3 which maps to B. Then we check left and right of B. So left and right of B both are null. So these if conditions are false. In the next iteration, we check if the queue is empty. So queue is empty now. So this while loop terminates. And the last step is we have to print the values of the map. So map in C++ or Java is sorted. So this will print the sorted values of this map. So minus two maps to H, minus one maps to D, zero maps to A, one maps to Z, two maps to C, and three maps to B. So these are the sorted values, and this is our top view. So we can see here H, D, A, Z, C, B. So this is the top view of this binary tree. If we look at the time complexity of this method, the time complexity is order of n log n because the insertion time in the map takes log n and the height of the tree can be n if it is a squid tree. Now let's see what are the changes that would be required to print the bottom view. So for printing the bottom view, there is only one change required that we need to remove this if statement. So the bottom view of this tree will be h, k, l, p, c, and b so node d and k both have a distance of minus one from the root node a and l both have a distance of zero and z and p both have a distance of one so in the bottom view so we'll be able to see those nodes which have a higher level so out of d and k k has a higher level so k is visible out of a and l l has a higher level so l is visible and out of z and p p has a higher level so p is visible so in the bottom view, when we are traversing this tree, we'll update the map whenever we encounter a new node with the same distance. Because the new node will have a higher level because we are traversing this tree in the level order traversal. So first we'll traverse level 0 and for then we'll traverse level 1, then 2, then 3. So if at a later stage we encounter a node which has the same distance, then we will update the map. So the only change is that in the bottom view, we do not require this if condition. We'll update the map whenever we encounter a new value for a particular distance. Everything else remains the same. So once you've understood the algorithm of the top view and the bottom view, let's see the implementation. So all the source code that I'll be showing is available in my GitHub repository. Link of that is available here and as well as in the description. Now let's have a look at the code. In the main function, I've created this tree. The root node is A, the left of A is D, in this manner, I've initialized all the nodes of the tree. Then I have this function top view in which I pass the root node. In this function, I check if the root is null, then I return. Then I create a queue which has elements as pair of tree node and the integer value. Integer value is the distance from the root node. So the first element is root comma zero. Then I create a map in which the key is the distance from the root and the value is the node value. So this map will be sorted map. Then I run this while loop till the queue is not empty. So I check the front of the queue and I put them in the current and distance variable. Then I remove the front element from the queue. Then I check if there is an entry for the distance value in the map. If the distance is not present in the map, then I add a new key for the distance. And then I check left and right of current. So if the left is not null, I push left of current and distance minus one in the queue. And if right is not null, then I push right of current and distance plus one in the queue. I run this while loop until the queue is not empty. And at the end, I print the values in the map. So these values in the map will be printed in sorted manner. And in the bottom view function, I just remove this if condition. Every time when I encounter a node which is on the same distance, I will update the map. So that is the only difference in the bottom view code. Now let's see the output of this program. So the top view of the tree by using iterative method is HDAZCB and the bottom view is HKLPCB. So that was all for this video. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like my content, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.